Hi, I'm Julianne Cost. With the help of artificial intelligence, Adobe Camera Raw can automatically generate a synthetic depth map or 3D depth estimation based on the content of an image so that we can change the focus plane and quickly create a narrow or shallow depth of field in a photograph. In the Lens Blur panel, simply click Apply and Adobe Camera Raw will use AI to calculate a depth map with the focus point automatically applied to the subject in the image. Then we can use the Blur Amount slider to decrease or increase the amount of blur. Lens Blur also adds a bouquet to the image to make the blur look more natural. You can choose from five different aperture shapes and use the Boost slider to decrease or increase the effect. In images like this, without several bright light sources, the effect can be subtle, but we can see its effect on the small blurred iceberg as well as in the lighter points in the mountains. If we want more control over the focus point, we can select the point or area focus icon. If I click in the water, it becomes in focus. If I click or click drag in the background, then the mountains are in focus. We can also adjust the focus using the range bar. We can reposition the rectangle within the bar to change the focal area, and we can drag either edge of the rectangle to contract or expand the focal range. To reset the focal range to the automatically generated depth map, we can double click anywhere in the focal range bar or select the subject focus icon. To see an overlay of the AI generated map, we can enable visualize depth. Now by default, the color overlay in the image corresponds to the colors in the focal range bar. With visualize depth enabled, as you reposition or expand or contract the rectangle, the areas that are within the focal range are displayed in white, while yellow and purple represent areas outside of the focal range and will be blurred. All right, let's hide the overlay and adjust the focal range, and then preview the effects of lens blur using the eye icon to toggle between before and after. In this next image, we'll take a look at lens blur's refinement tools. I'll apply lens blur and increase the blur amount. Then I'll select the point or area focus tool and click on the yellow house. I want a very narrow depth of field, so I'll contract the sides of the rectangle. But when we zoom in, we can see some areas need a little bit of touch up. I'll use the disclosure triangle to access lens blur's two refinement tools, the focus and blur brush. We can use the amount slider to adjust the strength of the blur or focus. We can change the brush size and feather or the softness of the brush edge. The flow slider will adjust the speed at which the brush applies the adjustment. So lowering the flow amount enables a slower buildup of the effect. The auto mask option can help automatically detect edges based on contrast and color when painting. I'll start with a small brush and I'll paint on the left side of the house in order to blur this area but the blur amount is too much, so even though I've already painted in that area, I can still adjust the amount slider. If I ever paint over an area and want to erase the refinement, I can hold Option on Mac or Alt on Windows and paint over the area. We can continue to add additional brush strokes anywhere in the image that need the same amount of blur. So I'll paint along the roof line. In this case, I can either hold the Shift key to constrain the brush to a horizontal or vertical line, or I can click once with the brush, then hold the Shift key and click again, and Lightroom will connect the two strokes with a straight line. All right, I'll also blur the right side as well. Now, even though I've made multiple brush strokes at this point, I can still adjust the blur amount, and it will update all of the areas that I've just painted. But if I want to apply a different amount of blur to another area in the image, like this blue house, then I'll click the plus icon ending the previous painting session and committing those edits into the depth map. Then I'll start painting over the house. And now when I return to the panel to adjust the amount of blur, the only blur that's being adjusted is over the blue house. We can use the focus brush to remove areas that are blurred by mistake or to make creative adjustments. I'll get a larger brush with a soft edge and then just paint over the road area here in order to remove the blur. Enabling Visualize Depth allows us to view these refinements that we've made to the depth map, and we can adjust the amount of blur and even paint with this overlay showing. All right, let's hide the overlay and zoom out, 
And if we ever wanted to remove all of the refinements, we could always click on Reset. All right, let's use the eye icon to view the image without lens blur and with lens blur applied. All right, four quick things before we wrap up. First, if a photo has a depth map from the camera, for example, images taken in portrait mode on an iPhone, Camera Raw will use the depth map created by the device by default. If you prefer Camera Raw to create a synthetic depth map, click the three dots that appear with the images that contain depth maps and choose to uncheck Use Device Depth. Second, any healing applied to the image is applied to the unblurred photograph. Third, if you have any AI-generated masks, like subject, sky, or objects, they may need to be updated after applying or adjusting lens blur options. And lastly, this version of lens blur is early access. Because it can provide good results with a well-defined subject, foreground, and background, the team didn't want to hold the feature back. But if the lens blur results aren't working at the level that you expect it to, please use the feedback option to share your comments as the team continues to improve the AI and machine learning model for lens blur. I'm Julianne Cost. Thanks for watching.